Welcome to episode one. Let's journey on. Let's explore. Here we go. We've got Qt Creator. So what does you what did you do with Qt Creator? Simple really. New project. There's a button. Oh. That's nice. Uh yeah, it's a widgets application console. Creates a Qt application for the desktop, includes a Qt designed base main bleh, window. Hmm. Sounds fun. Uh, we've got libraries. Oh, we'll need those later. Other projects. Uh, Qt quick. That's that QML thingy. I left myself a note about that. Just one moment. QML. I nearly tried to explain it last time. It's not Java, but it is. There we go. That's what I couldn't remember. QML. The cute markup language. Very similar to Java. Um, which, if you are a Java programming, good on you. If you're Java programming this, good luck. Uh, Autodesk programs, because I'm not going to be using Quake. Um, non QT, just plain. See applications, import project. Oh, git clones. I could have done it from here. Oh, blast blades. I didn't know you could do it from here. Hmm, there you go. You learn something new every day when you start exploring. I can tell you that right from here. So I could have git cloned my repository straight from here instead of having to do it like git clone SSH, blah, 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 that lot. Yeah, my bad. I'm going to go for an application. Um, pick one. What we got? Quick, 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 quick. I said I'm not doing quick. Console. No, I've done console before. Let's, what's this top one? Let's choose this and see what it does. Okay. Introduction and project location. So, no, I don't want it in workspace. I want it in YouTube, Explore 3D, choose. There we go, set as default. And we'll have to give it a name. It's called Explore 3D. So I'm gonna call it, let's explore. There we go. Uh, that's okay, that's okay. It doesn't say anything else, so next. Right, lovely. Um, select a kit. Mm, I've got 64 bit 2, desktop, local PC, GCC, plus, plus, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and 64 bit. Mm, that's times 8. Six is it? I don't know. In GDP, I can't see the difference. So I will choose one. I will only choose one. I'll choose the bottom one because that makes more sense to me. Details. Oh, let's explore the details. Let's just make this bigger so I can see them. Uh, debug, release, and profile. Oh, profile sounds fun. Whoa, hey, don't do that. That's a pop up in the half. Um, where's it? What, what, what's, where's it putting everything? It's going to put it in the workspace. No, it's not. YouTube Explore 3D. Yeah, okay. It seems that everything's going to be in Explore 3D. So, yeah, why not? Uh, leave that alone. You can change that. I usually, if I'm starting up a project that I'm not going to use Qt Creator for, I would change all of these to exec or something. As you've seen me doing that in uh, the past, so I don't think you've got any problem with that. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to browse or do anything silly. Ah. Now. 
this matters. This matters a lot uh, because how we set it up here affects how that main window UI will interact with us. So, no, I don't know what Q main window, what else have we got? Q widget dialogue, no, Q main window, I'll have a main window, thank you. Uh, generate form, yeah, why not? Uh, see what I mean about it, giving us quite a bit. Uh, configure git, yes please. As add, as, as, add as a sub project, no thank you, because we haven't got any other projects to add it to. There we go. Files to be added. Uh, exploring main, main window, main window H, main window UI. Okay. Finish. Wow. Look at that. Oh, I didn't type a thing. Uh, yeah. That's main. Look, it's done everything for me. Got pretty colours. Uh, there's down here there's a run button make sure it's in the right thingy here on the little TV screen just above it build debug profile or release keep it in debug until you're ready trust me it matters a lot um, so we've got output windows here I don't know if those have been added to my git or not that's interesting uh, how do I find out? Version control, please. Here we go. Git add. Yeah, it's added them all. You see, you can check back on this. You can do absolutely everything. So I know exactly what my version control is doing now. Okay. Uh, compile application. There's nothing under there. Compile. I'll use. I'll use that in a minute. You probably can't even read what's on my screen here. One second. Oh, wait a minute. It's changed it already, hasn't it? Yeah, I was supposed to have it at 1, 160. That'll do. Uh, what else was in here? General messages. I thought there would be one. But no, there isn't. Oh, that means it worked, obviously. So I'll keep that one open. Test results. Nothing in there. We'll have that one. Anything else? Mm, no. Okay. So I've got all of these little panels. I've got eight panels at the bottom. What I found. Um, the only ones you're really, really interested usually is the compiler output and the application output. And the very first one, issues. Maybe search results is useful. Issues are none. This is what we want to see. None. If I put a dot there, it automatically comes up with an issue straight away. It's immediate. It also tells you on the right hand side of your screen the issue. So there we go. That's that done. That's issues. So compilation. Two ways to compile. You can run it with the green arrow to the right. Uh, there is this thing start debugging which you can do as well and you can also build project just do a straight build so I'll do just do the straight build for now uh, I've got compile output open there it goes and you're thinking wow that was a lot yes it was wasn't it I'll show you why in a second uh, and it's not Java <laughs> let's run it there you go, main window. And that's exactly what we have done. It will copy whatever your background settings are. I'm on a dark setting for my window system, so it's picked up on that and given me a dark setting. We can change everything about this window, including that little thing there that says menu. Yeah, right. Uh, we can add anything we want to this. Okay, I'll, we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Okay, that's it. Uh, elapsed time zero zero. 
uh, application output was that and we exited with code zero there was no there was no output basically so that's okay the run button comes up so you can run it from here and stop it from here you don't have to keep going back it's all quite nice and you can also clear the screen which is obviously quite nice okay I think I've been around all the windows now that I want to do uh, okay you can set it so that these automatically pop up as well if you wish to every time you click a button or whatever you, you've got plenty of, um, of um, 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 tools options you've got loads of options here uh, you see plus plus options for highlighting different colors use whatever color schemes you want whatever makes it easy for you um, Build and run debugger designer. Da, 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 da. App version control git. Uh, Prepend to path. Nothing. Miscellaneous. Nothing. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Don't care. Next. I'm not really that bothered at this point in time. I'll work the git situation out off screen because once I work out how to use it, I'll tell you. Ah, drink. Ribena thingy. Well, it's not actually it's something different, mm. especially at this time of day. Uh. So, what's all this? And what's all this? And wow, well, that looks ugly. Um, oh, it's split it into headers. Oh, right, we've got the header here. Here's the header. Well, hey, look at that for a header. That's nice. And we also have a form. Our main window UI. User interface, that stands for. Now, what's the difference between C++ and Qt or Qt? Firstly, there is no C++ used in any of these screens that I am showing you. This is all Q application, that's Qt application. Main window is uh, from Qt, obviously it's our main window, it's a class that is done. Int main int arg char star arg v, open close, ah uh, that's C++, that bracket C++, that bracket C++, and that's it. Everything else is Qt main window that's uh, line one qt well it's an include it's an include it's every all language all c++ languages have that so that's c++ c++ uh, qt 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 q well that's c++ really uh, c++ really because that's just deleting um, a pointer. I uh, can't click on that one yet. If you have done, good luck to you. It means you're in that uh, pen there. Just click on your the one above it and you'll come back to this. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. If and defin hash define end if. Oh lovely. We're using old school instead of pragma once. This is what we used to do before we had hash Paragma wants for header files. We used to do this if and def and define and if just to surround it so that it couldn't be included twice in a project. And that's what that is. That's called a header guard. I think I've covered head header guards before. Not much C going on here, but you can see the similarities. Right, let's take that one step further, shall we? I can. Let me just get a grab hold of something. Oh, let me just show you. Well, I'll show you the last bit. There you go. That's your UI. Yeah. We get buttons to play with. Oh, hey! And boy, are we going to play. Oh, boy. We are really going to play. And this thing down here is wondrous. Down the bottom right hand side. Just scroll through that lot. Whoa, lovely, lovely stuff. We'll be having a good look at that as well. Um, as I said, just go back to text. Uh, no, just close that. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> what 
what was, where was I up to? Oh yes, yeah, C++, C++ reference. We have access whilst using Qt to all of C++. Okay, just one second, just get the reference out of the way. Main, just seen me do it in the past. Uh, hash include IO stream. You've seen me use this, I hope. I hope you've seen your other videos. It's there, that's C++. All the header files for C are there. STDIO. You can see them coming up. See? STDIO.h. It's remarkable. So you've got the full C language in front of you. And then, on top of that, you get extra options called Qt. This is C++. It starts array uh, for containers down through... I've used, I've used... yeah, I've used map, I've used arrays and vectors and things. Vectors at the bottom there. Uh, input output stream, the IO stream, how... Oh, how that works. Uh, down here we've got the atomic, which is a uh, thread safe or something, and threading, yeah. And then you've got all of the rest of the libraries for C++. Of course, above this we have C, which is all these libraries. We then have all the classes associated with Qt, which start at A D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Yeah, we've got all that lot as well. What? How are you meant to learn all that? You're not. You're meant to use the manual. There is so much here. One person possibly could learn it all, I suppose, in a month of Sundays or something. Uh, but not me. So, this is why I said this is going to be exploration. And if you want to know what C++ is, it is, well, it's a simple kind of real thing, really. Exception handling? No, not really. Inheritance, objects, templates, yeah, automatic stuff, here we go. C++ language has two main components, a direct mapping of hardware features, mouse, keyboard, graphics card, etc. Provided primarily by the C subset, the zero overhead abstractions based on those mappings, and that's it. So everything that you see in this lot here are abstract. They have been abstracted out of the hardware. So you get direct access to the underlying hardware. All of this converts into assembly code, which then converts into machine code using the linker. Sorry, you compile it to the assembly language and then you link it through the libraries to machine code, which is direct access to the hardware. It's fast, it's efficient, if you write it properly. And of course it works anywhere. There you go. I think we've been through all of that lot. So, you, this will work on any machine. Will it? No, because if you have a look at like manage kits, I have desktop and desktop Qt. I don't have any more auto detected, which means I haven't got the bits and pieces installed uh, to do the other bits and pieces. I can do if I want. Uh, you can do like iOS, um, which is Mac, Windows, um, Windows 10. You can do anything. 
This will work on anything. Um, what is it? Android? That kind of thing. Cute works on anything. It is designed especially to work on anything because it's not just aimed at uh, the games market. Although certain things I'm looking into at the moment are worked on by the games market. It works on anything. It, this will work on uh, any Android I, uh, OS and that means your phone. It means drones that you can fly in the air it means those uh, ticket handing out machines that, uh, that that you get at a car park when you're going into a car park and the barrier raises and it gives you a ticket so you pay later or whatever stamping the time that's done using either this language or c plus plus or c uh, it's amazing what you can do so let's get out of our build settings because i only have those two kits so I'm just using the default at the bottom okay as long as you know you might have different ones there choose whichever one you want if you're on Windows and it says like MSVC uh, 2017 use that one because that converts straight over to Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 so you can swap it over and you can use either editor so let's have a closer look at what we've got here main this is the main entry point to any program ever in C++. Q application is Qt's way of making an application engine for you, which will run an application on any device. It's large by comparison to uh, Amber SL, which I've written myself because Amber SL can't do as much as Qt. This thing does everything. It can grow large if you let it. Keep it small, keep it simple, keep it easy. There's very easy ways to do that. And that will take us to our last file here, which is the profile. And hopefully you've seen me use that before. Qt relies on these. Sections of Qt, if you want to do OpenGL, you put in OpenGL and it will then allow you to use all the OpenGL stuff. It will allow you access to that. So at the moment we've got access to Core and the Graphical User Interface or GUI. The Graphical User Interface is on that Design button or under Main Window UI. And that's where we're up to. GUI. How long have we done? Oh, not bad. Let's have a look at that GUI. And saved. Okay. Uh, 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 do not save. Dun, 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 dun. Let's clear the boards, please. Uh, do not save. Make sure. Oh, and it's got all the documents down here. Now, you might know that I don't like it when it splits sources, forms, and headers. Uh, you can click on projects at the top and just click on open documents bookmarked file system and we'll give literally the file system ace um, class view I didn't know it had that wow nice I'll look at that later uh, it can outline no outline available there you go include hierarchy no includes really going on in here because I haven't opened anything. Uh, open documents is down there. You can obviously add. You don't have to stick to two. You can add more up and down here. Move it in across and you can you can manipulate it how you want. So I want to have a look now at that form. A bit blank. Let's have a push button. Okay. Push button pushed. There you go. One push button. So it's got an asterisk up here. So mean that means save it. So uh, Control S to save. I always do that. I don't know why. Just close that and uh, run it. And there we go. Push button. Don't do anything. But it's a push button. Can't move it. Can't do anything about it. 
There you go, it's static. That's the push button. Isn't that wonderful? That's easy, isn't it? Heck yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. What's difficult about it all? Um, well, not a lot. Not a lot, really. It's quite sensible. Up on the top right, this is this right hand side is more important than what you see. What you see isn't always what you get. Better warn you. It tries to be. It does a very good job. It does better today than it used to. Oh my god, what it used to do was horrendous. Uh, geometry, 400 by 300. Let's make that 900 by 5. Um, I can drag it here. And that will change it. But I prefer doing it with width and height. So I will do 900 across. And height, I want at 500, please. There you go. That's my first bit of programming today. How's about that? There you go. Automatically resizes this. reason I want to do that is so I can bring that over to it. And bring that up. So I can see exactly what size screen I've got here that I'm dealing with. Right. It all depends on the central widget. That's where we start. Widget. What's a widget? A key widget. A widget is a button. It's anything. It's spaces, it's buttons, it's layouts, it's list views, uh, trees, group boxes. These carry on down, by the way, as containers and input widgets and stuff. Lovely. There's an OpenGL one there. Oh. Oh, spoiler alert. I'm going to look at that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I want some push buttons. I want some push buttons. Uh, can I just delete that one? Yeah, just delete it. There you go. It deletes. Now, you could spend days on this screen. And I'm not joking. You really could. Um, how to bypass a lot of the exploration into this because it, it it's in depth the first thing i found out about this screen was that central widget up on the top right is the player that's the one you're looking at from scratch from nothingness from scratch central widget let's look at that main toolbar uh, don't want one status bar no, I don't want one. Menu bar. No, don't want one. Right, so it's just me and a central widget. How about that? It's just a nice blank main window. Ooh, lovely. Uh, object name main window. Great. That's what we'll call it then, I don't know. Well, for now anyway. We'll change its name after. Uh, let's have a look. What can we do with this main window? First thing we're going to have to do is to tell it which way round we want to lay things out. So the first thing we're going to have to do is use our layouts. Horizontal is downwards. I'll go with vertical. So there we go. And that's going to be our main vertical layout. And I want stretch. What stretches have we got? Anything? Hmm. Okay. Great. Let's just move this around a bit. There we go. It's in the middle of the screen now. That's interesting. I've not seen it do it this way before, so bear with me. I'm learning as you are. <laughs> right, so I've got verticals going downwards. So now... I want one. I want the vert. I want three verticals, don't I? Inside it. This doesn't look right. Hmm. <laughs> it 
yeah, I do. Uh, so we've got vertical. Ah, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Let's just uh, bear, 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 delete that. Right, so I've got one vertical layout. I want that on the left. So I will need three vertical layouts. No. I'll need a vertical layout, a horizontal layout, and a vertical layout. The horizontal layout's got to be on the vertical layout. Okay, fine. So I want a horizontal layout in there. I also... No, I don't like it there. Hmm. Not sure really how I want to do this. Let's get some vertical layouts going, shall we? Let's have another one. Because that'll do da, 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 like that. So let's get three of these up on screen just to make me think a bit more. Make that one a bit bigger. Don't know what size is one of these yet. There we go, we've got three of them. Ah. That hasn't changed, it's still got a circle on it. Ah, that's why. Back we go. Ah, I didn't notice that. Now we've got these little buttons up here. If I click on that button, will it let me do it? Central widget. Create menu bar. Add toolbar. Create status bar. Change object. Do what's this? <laughs> I don't know. Change style sheet. Nah, that doesn't help us, does it? It's got blank. Yeah, size constraints. Promote to go to slot. Okay. So what's all this stuff at the top then here? What have we got here? Edit widgets. Edit signals and slots. Edit buddies. Edit tab order. And then these are greyed out, I think. So let's try... No. Now let's try it. No, it's not going to give it me, is it? Tooltips, motive, change signals, do, 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 clock, 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 ah, layout, there you go. That's what I'm looking for. So adjust size, and then you can't do a layout. Hmm. Global user, Q widget, promote constant, blah, 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 global include, yep, yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> Very nice. So how does this, how is this done? This is a good question. What I would have thought is that we took a vertical layout and just dropped it on to our main win main window like that. And it comes up with that. No. I know what it is, you know. I've just worked it out. You can't do it until you've put something on it. Let's put a push button on it. That'll confuse it. So our central widget, no, our main window, yes, layout, here we go, it's all now, yeah, so I put a push button on, I can now alter the background layout, and I want it to go, across, and that's what happens, your push button goes very, very weird. So now, remember, it's going to go up and down. So I want my horizontals now. And... Ooh. I can put a horizontal one below it. That's interesting. Oh, well, I'll do that then. So I've got a blue bar at the bottom. I'll drop it on the blue bar. That pushes the push button up to the top. So I've now got horizontals going across there. 
That's good. Where is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Where's that horizontal box gone? There. Delete. So that push button is correct. I need two more vertical layouts. So I need... I actually need one. I want a horizontal one in the middle, don't I, between them? Yeah, so below the push button and above the red line. So that goes there. Yeah, that works. I'll take my push button away from there and I'll put it into the middle one. Can I put it into the middle one? Yeah, there we go. Where's that OpenGL thingy? Uh, now let's get another push button going. Push button. I want it to the right of that push button, please. No, it's not going to go in there. Did I get the middle layout? Horizontal. Onto that horizontal layout. I'm not sure, you know. So I'm going to pop you there. That's interesting. I'm sure they're coming out right, but I'm not quite sure if we've got the right orderings in yet. <laughs> so that's the first push button. That's the second push button. If I try and put spaces in, what's going to happen to them? Let's put a horizontal space there. Can I? Can I put a horizontal space there? No, I can't. Now I'm starting to get somewhere. Ah, uh -huh. that's interesting. I should drop that for a minute. So, back up. So that means I want horizontal layouts. They're not to delete everything. Okay, let, uh, just delete. Yeah, it's okay. Just delete. Doesn't matter. Uh, delete. Uh, delete. Right, I've still got this horizontal thingy. But I want to go across. Central is going in vertical layout. So I want three horizontals. So that's one. Two, and the next one down. I should, I should should highlight at the bottom. Highlights, drop it. There you go. Three horizontal layouts. Now it says it on the on the right hand side. So I can name that one uh, top. Very adventurous on my names here. Uh, double click on that one. I'll name that one middle. And I'll name this one bottom. Can you see a plan coming together here yet? Hmm. Top, middle, and bottom. Ooh, ah. So if we take this center one, and no, I want a push button at the top and bottom first, don't I? So a push button at the top and a push button at the bottom. And then spaces, I take a horizontal space and put it on the left. It'll now hide. You see, horizontal layouts will go left and right. This is why I was trying that space route before. Do that, it pushes the button right over. But if you get another one and put it to the right and drop it in, it puts the push button in the middle. Isn't that nice? Does it all by itself? You know, this is this is just not me typing or programming at all. This is me playing happy graphical fun time <laughs> with blades. <laughs> there you go. We've got a push button there now. Uh, if we put a push button in here and then we put... Oh, that's going to be interesting. How's that going to work?
How do I put a push button below it? I can't, because it's horizontal. I need a central vertical, don't I? Ah. No. We'll think about that in a minute. Because <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh, what was that container down here that looked really ace? Open GL widget. Let's have a line. Oh, it's a big boxy type thing. Let's pop that on the left hand side here. In the middle. Middle box, left hand side. Right hand side, sorry. That's not your left, that's the right. Uh, widgets, 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 widgets. Let's have another push button. I want more push buttons. Got to be more push buttons. Need more cowbell. That's what I need. Let's have a button there. Now, that's looking ace, isn't it? Let's just take a look at this thing here, this black bit in the middle. I want that to stretch out. So it takes, it, it gains uh, accessibility. I thought it was somewhere at the top. Uh, enabled geometry size at ah, size policy. Let's open this one up. Let's just close the geometry. Horizontal preferred. What happens if I put horizontal uh, expanding? Whoa, look at that already. Vertical policy. Let's do the same. Expanding. Yes. Those two push buttons. Oh, it'll do like that. That'll do. To hit with it. Why not? I don't think grey's very good, though. Um. Um. Grey. Where's the grey coming from? The grey will just be the main window itself, won't it? So yeah, we've got size policies done. Uh, palette inherited. Change palette. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Click on change palette and wallop. Uh, quick. What? Uh, cancel, I don't know what that means. Uh, compute details. Oh, right, you, you choose a colour and it computes all the details. Is that what it's trying to tell me? So if I take, say, a very dark blue. Okay. Yeah, it computes all the details. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, a bit of news for you. Uh, just save that out. And remember I was saying about the run button down the bottom left hand side? Well, you're still in the editor. There you go, that's your main window. You're still in it. But watch what happens now. Oh! Yes, because of that expansion exercise. Yeah, that's a bit flickery. It's not really open GL, is it? It will be when we're finished. But it still says it's main window. I have to change that and the push buttons. Um, what can we call these? Uh, top, bottom, left, right. Okay, got it. Close the uh, application. You see, you can just run it from here whilst you're messing about, <clears throat> so you can see what's going on. Uh, so we've got top, middle, and bottom. Uh, the top has a push button. What are we going to call this push button? Uh, menu, menu, uh, button, actually I don't like it doing that, I prefer button, underscore menu, and if I click inside that button, Yes, double click inside it. I can say menu. Return. Okay, bottom, push button. I'm going to call you a button. 
underscore exit. Okay, double click on that one and we can type exit. Return. Ta da! On the left hand side, we are going to have push button three is on the left. So that is a button underscore left and that will be called <laughs> push button yeah right uh let's see what what should we call this one uh test and on the right hand side does it come up down here anywhere i think it does down here there you go. Text, test. It's down there under the abstraction part. It's abstracting us. Isn't that nice? I'll have a look at that on the window in a minute. Um, so the right hand button is... Button left, push button four. That's button right. Uh, test and... Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to put um, clear for now. So we can clear the screen or something. I don't know. Um, that's it. So, uh, yeah. Q main window. Let's look down that abstract there. Icon size, tool button size. Mm, docs and blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Local? Yeah, right, okay. What's local? English? Whoa, that's me. Country, United Kingdom. Yeah, he knows where I am. That's good news. So long as it knows where I am, I don't need to. Ace. Accessible description. <laughs> what on earth? Oh, translations, alright. Tran accessible name. Right, what's this? Status, tool, tip, duration. No, I'm not, I haven't got tool tips on, so that's still minus one. Ah, window icon. Yeah, uh, we'll have that window icon thingy, whatever that is. Yeah, <laughs> you can change your window icon there. Ah, window title. Main window. Um, right, okay. Let's call this uh, the Exploration Laboratory. No, I can't spell that. Exploration 3D with OpenGL. OpenGL. If anybody wants me to do QT3D, by the way, I'm quite happy to do QT3D. The only reason I'm picking OpenGL is because that's more diverse. It's not specialized to QT, where QT3D is really specialized to QT only. It's not C++ at all. It goes far beyond and... Oh, better choose a, a number, hadn't we? Which OpenGL do you want to use? 4.5 uh, or 3.3? .3? Well, I've been using 3.3 .3 so far. So we'll use 3... Uh, gold! Why did I just do that? Oh well, just naffed that up, Anna. Uh, X duration 3D open GL 3.3. Yeah. Now I'll just test that. Thank you. There you go. Exploration 3D, OpenGL 3.3. A menu button, a test button, an exit button, and a clear button. And that's how you make a graphical user interface. And as you may already have noticed, I chose an OpenGL widget to go in the middle. So I know that this is OpenGL. We haven't told a computer that, but we know it's OpenGL. Let's let's put it that way. We'll we'll have to tie that into something. I'm guessing that's actually quite good. I think I got the size about right. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Very happy. So 
for a day's work and 50 minutes of recording, we've uh, looked at the GUI, uh, sorry, graphical user interface. We've explored it. Well, <laughs> I've made a mess of exploring it. And now you've gone to, you've found out the style of how these episodes are going to go. It's going to be sometimes me fumbling around a bit, trying to get things right, <laughs> because I don't know. But that looks good. I like that. Uh, yeah, we've still got this, this OpenGL widget thing here. What's this? Can I get class? There we go. What 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 is this saying here? Oh, that's the actual widget name. Oh, right. I'll call that... Uh, Let's see, uh, what can we call it? Main view? Uh, no. Um, yeah, main underscore view. We'll have that for that. What's this one? I've got a couple of spaces. And that is left I know which order I did them in you see top that spacer is right top uh, yeah that's looking better I don't like things that don't mean anything you've probably already got an idea about that. I really can't stand it when it just... Ah, these spaces here, yeah. So, bottom left. Uh, so, left. Bottom. And space of four was right bottom. Because I don't won't know what they mean otherwise when I come back to it later on. There we go. And it just tells me there that it's a spacer. It tells me here that it's the bottom right one, or right bottom one, or left bottom one. So I know what they are. I know it's a Q push button. I just want to know which one it is. And it says it's menu button, or exit, or button right and button left type of thing. So I know how to modify this layout easier using this menu as well as the visual screen. So if I click on that clear, as you can see, button right highlights up in black. If I click on menu, button menu highlights up in black, not very well at the right hand side, but it does. That's how it all works. I've now got a cat sat in front of the TV screen, so I can't see anything. So I'm going to control S quickly and save everything out. I'm going to save that out. Nothing's changed here. Uh, if I can get to sources, pass the cat's head, main, that's where we're up to. We haven't changed anything. Uh, the code is still the code, but now if I press run, uh, Muppet, do you want to press run or do I have to press run? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll press run. Run. Now what we're left with is this pretty exploration screen. If you're wondering why I chose the figures 900 by 5, it's because it's the same dimensions as my actual screen. It's 9 by 5. So 900 across, 500 down. I've got a 9 by 5 screen. Uh, that's my ratio. Uh, so when we do our graphics, I want this in the same ratio as my screen so I can see if there's any uh, stretching going left to right. And if there is, we have to modify that and get the ratio correct for how we draw things. So that will give me a problem when we do the OpenGL. It will probably stretch first and then we'll modify that after. So exit doesn't work yet. Yeah, that's probably going to be the first button we do. Hmm. Yeah. Let's, we can still use a close though, so that's all right. Happy? Happy. I'm very happy. It's actually been a good episode, so um, thanks for staying with me. Thanks for exploring the uh, graphical user interface with me. I think that's a successful screen for what we're going to do. We're going to do some OpenGL in there, I hope. And uh, yeah. I think I'm going to have to say the usual, Anna. Catch you next time. Take care. Hey.
Hafun.